So in this video, I wanted to share a little snippet of the Byland podcast, episode 131, of which I was a guest. Emery and I spoke about lots of different stuff over an hour. We talked about the differences between hiking in Europe versus hiking in the States. We talked about problems hikers are facing with tight hips from sitting and foot issues from crappy footwear. So I wanted to give a bit of a visual representation and share a short snippet here. Also I wanted to share one of the most important stretches that I believe hikers need to be doing to free up their hips. You know, we dive into depth in the episode, so I really recommend you listen to the full episode. But at the end of this video, I'll be sharing that stretch in full detail. So check out Emery's channel, watch the video, and please listen to the full podcast because it's full of great information. Let's get into it. Chase, welcome to the podcast, man. I'm really stoked to have you. Howdy. Thank you for having me. What do you see most people have like what's the common problem that you're seeing people have feet and hips okay yeah let's start with let's start with or what should we start with feet or hips <laughs> what comes from we can start with, <laughs> i think any good approach to this starts from the ground up so we'll start with okay. the feet we're facing a foot epidemic basically in our hmm. world that we live in because of the footwear that we put on our feet which is essentially allowing us to compensate for the things that our bodies can't do because we're sitting. And essentially what they did is put a lot of cushion into shoes and, and created a heel, which created false ankle mobility, which meant that the foot couldn't do its job of being, and its job is being a natural spring. Like it's designed to uh, help us move efficiently over the ground. When you take that direct contact from your foot and the sensory input from the ground, when you take that away, you inhibit the foot to be able to do its natural job of being a spring. When the hips come into it is mainly from sitting. And I'm not saying that sitting is the enemy. Like sitting, we need to sit. We need to have a break from gravity every now and then. Have you heard the, um, there's a saying like sitting is the new smoking? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> and it's good, like, it's kind of stupid. It it's so kind bad. of true. It's yeah. kind of true. Basically what happens when we sit a lot uh, in the standard position like if you think you imagine you're driving a car or sitting on the toilet or sitting at a desk where your knees elevated at the heart of your hip mm -hmm. the muscles that pick the hip up like hip flexes and it's mm -hmm. you know quads and a bunch of other muscles like psoas and all that pretty much any mm -hmm. muscle that picks your hip up if it's in that shortened position for an extended period of time and i'm like on average People probably spend 10 to 12 hours a day sitting in that position. Dude, yeah. The body is really super efficient. It's If it notices that you're constantly sitting in that position, it will recognize that there's energy being wasted there. It's like, oh, we don't need this. We're always sitting. So why don't we just mm -hmm. tighten those muscles up to, to enable us to be more mm -hmm. efficient. So when those muscles get tightened, you can imagine like having a clamp clamps down on the muscles that are right in front of your pelvis all day mm. and then when we stand up what happens is that something has to compensate like firstly when you stand up you're not you try and stand up straight and you will continue to stand up straight until you reach 70 or 80 and then <laughs> we prefer that that movement of being hunched over because it's just too hard mm -hmm. but when we stand up straight when you know we're young and quote unquote, like healthy with our body, what happens is the hips compensate by rolling forward, which uh, essentially like switches the glutes off. That's a bad way of saying it, but mm -hmm. that hip position doesn't enable the glutes to do their intended purpose, which is to fire and push you forward at, when you're walking and running. Okay. That's more or less what the glutes are designed to do if we if we're talking well about it's a walking. gigantic muscle right like yeah it was the biggest muscle in the body i think <laughs> and the hips the hips are the biggest joint in the body okay. and when we when we when we sit and move very one-dimensionally we just lose all that beautiful range of motion that the hips have like you don't need to be able to do side splits and front splits it's cool if you can do that but you don't mm -hmm. you don't need that much range of motion mm -hmm. we just need a little bit more to enable the to enable us to go into hip extension which is the opposite of hip flexion and that's when your knee is your femur and your knees behind your pelvis behind your hips okay 
So when you're running and walking, we need to be able to push off using the glute to power us forward. The glutes are our engine. And then that, that power has to transfer down to the foot. The foot has to act as a spring. And the knee is essentially just a middleman, like a shock, shock absor absorber, basically, to be able to bend and flex and mm -hmm. enable that, that power transfer from Achilles tendon and, and the spring ligament in the foot. There's actually a ligament called the spring ligament. Well, it's, it's called something else that I can't remember, but it's a spring ligament and that enables that, that transfer of power to push us forward. Mm -hmm. So then the job has to be done by something else. So if the, if the glutes and the hips aren't doing the job, some, something else has got to take up the slack. Usually it's mm -hmm. the quads and the knees. So the quads have to work harder and, and all that pressure is going into the knee. And then on the lower end of the body, the calves. What do you think your style is? Can you kind of dive into, so people have a better idea of how you're, what your approach is to this kind of a, a thing? Like, do you call it mobility? Or what, do you, what do you call it? It's corrective exercise. Okay, correct. Okay. So the idea being that the body is designed perfectly and what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is undoing that perfection. And so rather than adding things into the equation like better shoes or trekking poles or knee braces or something, we actually look at the root cause of the problem and, and treat, not treat the symptoms, but actually treat mm -hmm. the cause of the problem. So... Yeah, it's corrective exercise is a weird uh, domain because you are hands on with someone usually, and you're not really you're not a physiotherapist, but you're not really a fitness guy either. Like I started okay. teaching fitness because that's what I thought people needed. I thought people yeah. needed to be like super strong and buff <laughs> or something you know or have or at least have a decent lung capacity which is all true in a way yeah. but if you layer all of that on top of a body that can't function the way it's designed to then it's probably going to do more harm than good so i'm in this really weird world where i'm like a hiking fitness or a mountaineering fitness youtuber but i've stopped really creating fitness content because i don't want to encourage people to do something that could potentially damage them at this stage i'm assuming that everyone's damaged and going from there and because of what we put our bodies through sitting all day we are most of us are really damaged stretching our hip flexors super important what happens when we sit all day in this position at a desk these muscles here on the front of the hip will get shorter over time because the body is very efficient. It's not gonna give you extra flexibility if you're not asking for it on a daily basis. So if you're sitting all day, I guarantee you you've got tight hip flexors. This is how we sort that out. So with the hip flexor stretch, we want ankle directly under knees, this knee directly under this hip. So we end up with these 90 degree angles here. Then we're gonna drive this working knee into the ground a little bit and we're going to scoop the hips so we're going to pelvic thrust in a way scooping down and underneath to try and expose the hip flexor now there's these deep muscles that lift the hip and they get very short and very tight when we sit all day so this is a really important stretch whether this back toe up is up or not it doesn't matter but just play around with the position maybe you need to lean in out forward back reach up try and find where it's tight where it feels good to loosen up so for me, I really like to raise that hand, scoop the pelvis, drive the knee into the floor here. We get a bit of quadricep engagement, but when I really scoop and squeeze that glute and lean forward slightly, that's where we get the hip flexor. That's gonna be a little bit different for everyone. Best protocol for this is to do this six days a week, 30 seconds holding and three sets on each side of 30 seconds. We'll swap to the other side. So rotating pelvis down and underneath, reaching if, that, if you find that works for you. And the most important thing with stretching as always is to breathe and relax. If we're looking for flexibility gains to lengthen muscle, 
it's got to happen regularly. So that's why I say six days a week, three sets of 30 seconds on each side. That will get you uh, serious results in terms of lengthening the hip flexor and being more comfortable in seated positions. It is one of the most important stretches for us to do as a modern human and just play around with it. Find the position that works for you. Find where you get the most activation right on the front of the hip. That is our hip flexor stretch.